Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Afternoon time here along the West Coast. It's the Earth Master here with an update video on this Thursday, July 7th, 2022 date, about 12.03 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 4.0 earthquake on the Earthquake 3D globe here. Looks like just off the coast of Japan, striking up there along the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire. Let's go ahead and check out a little bit of activity on the Solar Weather Department first. It looks like this uh, arrival, well, we were kind of expecting a G1 class storm yesterday. It looks like it's about one day late. It has arrived uh, within the last couple hours with KP index up around the five level, creating the auroras at the higher latitudes. Unfortunately, it is daylight up there and it will remain daylight for quite a while uh, throughout the day today and into the evening for portions up there. Uh, the southern hemisphere, southern pole has gotten in on the action as well. So not, not for sure about the population down there, but whoever is down there, if there is any people around the Antarctica area, they're getting quite a show pending. They have clear skies, 90% chance of the auroras up here within this level. So a pretty good significant G1 class storm kicking up. You see that popping up there on the KP index of five. Currently we're sitting at about a four level. Uh, so this could fluctuate a little bit throughout the, the rest of the afternoon. And again, this is from a CME or the uh, Coronal Hole 97, which had been facing us um, over the past few days or so. And again, it looks like it's uh, just a little bit late. The live data showing the uh, density level here kick up just a couple hours ago, as well as the speed up around the 400. Although this is not a significant uh, impact, there is a southward tilt on the interplanetary field allowing all this solar wind stream even though it's not a significant one to pour in and uh, that's why we're seeing this separation of the two lines here indicating the southward tilt with the uh, interplanetary magnetic field so pretty cool for those folks that get to see it here in california it's just gonna be another dry hot smoky day in the land of wildfires let me tell you not good uh, current flare threat uh, looks like a little possibility brewing from these couple sunspots here. They are growing pretty rapidly and uh, something to keep a close eye on over the coming days as these things rotate into view and provide us with a potential show of solar flares. Over the past day or so, things have been relatively minor, uh, barely reaching up into the sea level. Uh, looks like 75% chance for a sea flare from these folks issuing that uh, flare threat. M flare 15% chance, X flare around the 1% uh, uh, chance level. So again, G1 class storm currently in effect. That's obvious with the activity we're seeing at the northern uh, North Pole and the South Pole. The Aurora forecast uh, showing pretty nicely there. All right, earthquake activity. Let's go ahead and get over to that. Notice a couple spikes on the Mount St. Helens station. Uh, this morning, I've seen at least three of them. Uh, looks like one here around the Mount St. Helens area. This one came in, um, this is from like yesterday. So this earthquake here at Mount St. Helens, not even relevant to today's activity we've been seeing. One earthquake up here around Mount Rainier as well. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map and the seismic stations there at those volcanoes. This was last night, 108 epicenters of trimmer along the southern end of the Cascadia. Of course, Cascadia, a very dangerous subduction zone uh, off the coast of Northern California, stretching up past Vancouver Island ranges towards the uh, Queen Charlotte Sound. Uh, let's see here, let's check out the Mount St. Helens seismograph stations here. There, there's that one earthquake they reported, uh, yeah, from yesterday. Let me uh, pop this up here and see. Yeah, there's been a couple small little spikes of earthquakes uh, throughout the morning time. It looks like overnight as well. Seen a couple of these popping up here. So that's uh, been ongoing for a little while. Let's check out the Mount Rainier um, area. I know some of these stations here are a little spotty and getting accurate stations to, uh, to key up. That one's not found. Surprise, surprise. They need to work on those, I think. We'll check out one of these down here in the south side of the uh, Mount Rainier volcano. 
Come on. There we go. This looks a little bit more accurate. A couple small micro quakes there in the region, it looks like, but no, uh, no significant movement there at the Mount Rainier volcano. I've seen the USGS is uh, putting in some new uh, seismograph stations around the Glacier Peak area. Uh, right now, this area only has one seismograph station up here. It is situated up here in the uh, kind of like the northern part of Washington, outside of Mount Baker region. Uh, looks like, let's see here, this one does work, but they're uh, they're putting in a couple more seismograph stations out there around this volcano. So um, it could mean that, uh, well, a couple things. They want to get a better view of what's going on with the volcano as far as tectonic and uh, uh, volcanic activity goes. Uh, and also keep an eye on these these little earthquakes that are popping up here. Pretty obvious that there's quite a few of them here at the uh, the Glacier Peak area. There's a well-defined one right here. Uh, with more seismograph stations, they'll be able to pinpoint the exact locations of swarms of earthquakes there uh, in the vicinity. So like right now, there's only one and that's not sufficient at all. All right, uh, I don't think they're reporting anything up there either. I'm gonna go back to the all magnitudes here. No, not a couple earthquakes over here around Seattle, north of Seattle, but uh, nothing going on throughout the uh, Glacier Peak regions. All right, California earthquake activity. Uh, looks like things are still, yeah, looks like we had a little activity overnight as well within this region of the southern end of the Cascadia. The reason why I say that is because these depths here, 19 kilometers and 18 kilometers deep, down into the Cascadia Megathrust area. I know the subduction zone itself sits up here, but also extends underneath the North American plate quite a distance here into and underneath uh, Northern California, Oregon, and of course up northward through Washington. So little activity there overnight uh, around the Cobb Mountain region. Still some activity it looks like around the hydrothermal operation fields out there south of Clear Lake. As uh, far as the rest of California goes, looks like a little activity on the San Andreas Fault and some further movement around the Long Valley Super Volcano, although this swarm is outside of the swarm that we've seen uh, a few days ago. A couple separate swarms it looks like here uh, within the vicinity, so we'll keep an eye on that, see if it turns into anything drastic or not. Ridgecrest area, low activity throughout the uh, fracture zone of former large earthquakes and down here west of the Salton Sea area getting a little swarming activity uh, looks like so far a 3.5 near the Ocotillo Wells area this one kicking up overnight uh, so far today oh yeah a few small microquakes within the vicinity here again this sits just to the west of the uh, southern branch of the San Andreas Fault the Salton Sea area nothing specifically on that area right now just Kind of a little swarming to the west there by about uh, 15, 20 miles or so. Uh, the rest of the states here look pretty quiet. There's some spotty activity throughout uh, Utah and into the Texas area. Nothing going on that I can see here along the um, eastern part of the country. Looks way up here though. We got one earthquake uh, in the Canada region, a 2.3. This one kicking up yesterday afternoon. Um, yeah, late afternoon time frame. Uh, Alaska, some uh, activity kicking up there as well. Very typical day, it looks like. We still haven't seen any major adjustment here along the Kuro-Kamachaka Trench, although there's some activity kicking up here that we've seen on the Earthquake 3D Globe, USGS. Kind of late to the party, uh, but I'm sure they will get that uh, four-pointer uh, that kicked up there just a short time ago. Uh, see what we got in Hawaii. Not a whole lot going on there. Uh, looks, at least for the last hour goes, uh, a little spread of movement throughout Kilauea and up through the Mauna Loa area. Southeastern flank, pretty typical of earthquake activity there in that region. Uh, no major adjustments going on. Uh, we're starting to see the return of deep earthquake activity here in Fiji. And I kind of chatted about that yesterday, uh, watching this area for some possible large-scale deep activity. Well, we got the deep activity, but it's not quite large-scale yet. Uh, it's not out of the question that we do see something larger here. Uh, one of these earthquakes were below 600 kilometers, and that's some deep 
super deep adjustment uh, going on there south of Fiji. Uh, so we've got to watch this area potentially for some larger scale movement. Once that happens, once we get that larger scale adjustment and some deeper movement going on there, uh, we start, thing, start seeing things ramp up here once again around the Philippine plate and up just south of Japan. But at the same time, when that happens, we get some major adjustment uh, and some pressure up here along these trench areas up towards the subduction zone. Uh, so got to watch that region uh, pending we get some more larger quakes in that area. Uh, in the deep department, Puerto Rico, a couple earthquakes in that area today. Uh, South America, just a little spotty fours out there to the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, one from yesterday and one from uh, this morning. They want to stay in the uh, active zone, and that they are. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, check out the EMSC model here real quick and see what's cooking. There's that one earthquake up here. 4.0 off the coast of Japan that we've seen on the EMSC model. USGS not really uh, picking up on it yet. But looking at this map, even the even the EMSC model, there's not a whole lot going on uh, in terms of, uh, well, 4.0 and above. Little spotty. There's some movement down here along the Kermadec Trench that USGS uh, not reporting a 4.4. And also down here in the South Island, New Zealand from yesterday. Uh, 4.1 so this area ramping up a little bit with all the deep movement up north into the Fiji Islands area uh, Let's see what else we got. I think that's about it folks um, We'll be back here a little bit later on for the update uh, tonight Again solar weather kind of the uh, Kind of the big deal if you live up north that G1 class storm and again, like I say, it's it's lit up there. So a wrong time, wrong time of the day for the uh, auroras to be uh, looked at. Again, this was like a day late. Pretty crazy. Here's these uh, these guys put out an update. Looks like a high speed solar wind stream finally reached Earth, and minor G1 storm conditions were observed. Uh, the BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field is also pointing south, uh, a condition that could elevate the storm. Uh, a watch for moderate G2 storm levels will be in effect until 2100 UTC time, which is a uh, little less than two hours away uh, from this current time here at 12:16 uh, p.m. West Coast time. So. I don't think we're going to reach G2, but it uh, definitely peaked up out there on the the uh, KP index of 5. Looking pretty nice there on the uh, auroras. So. All right, guys. Have a good day. We'll chat you a little bit later on tonight. Going to be hot again. What's new? What's new in California besides hot, dry heat and wildfires? I can't wait to get out of here. Pretty soon, I'm going to be keying up saying, hey, what's going on? Earthmaster here checking in at... Uh, Ooh, 1216 Central Time. All right, guys. Actually, 1216, that would be uh, 216 Central Time. I kind of like the sound of that. All right, guys, take care. We'll chat you a little bit later on. I'll quit my rambling. Peace out, everyone. <laughs>